And as I've been taking this book on tour virtually, you know, all over um, from coast to coast, from Jamaica to Toronto, um, I've loved just people's enthusiasm and excitement around getting to nerd out about astrology within the context of this love story and coming of age um, of these um, young Black girls in Minnesota. Um, so I'm going to start off a little bit with, it's always, um, you know, kind of navigating like, oh gosh, you know, not being in person with people and just being a talker. Because usually when I'm with people, I like the back and forth and I don't just like to be the, you know, person on the stage being like, la, yeah, here's my thoughts, you know, which, you know, I do a little bit of that, but I like also just to hear people and feel them in a space. So forgive the, you know, complexity of the reality of digital communication and also the opportunity for so many of us to be connected um, even more because of this opportunity. So, yeah, um, I um, just want to talk a little bit about um, this book and, you know, just why astrology seemed to choose me for this book. Like, um, and you know what, just to be clear, there are going to be some spoiler alerts. There's all kinds of stuff that, you know, I'm going to be talking about. Hopefully you read the book. I'm not going to be going to the very end spoiler, but I will be just, you know, tip and tap and hit and happen all over the book. Um, but you know, the book does center, um, I, around, two characters. One is Audrey, a young um, Black woman from Trinidad who falls in love with a girl in Trinidad and gets found out and, you know, is sent to Minneapolis to live with her Black American father. And from there, um, you know, she meets Mabel, um, who's from Minnesota and a tomboy, you know, questioning um, her sexuality and her and Audrey become friends and Mabel discovers that she has a serious, mysterious illness. And as part of her healing journey, Audrey's like, yo, I'm going to like heal you with like every herb and witchy healing aspect that my grandmother has shared with me in my life, as well as um, a dimension of um, just uh, this, uh, um, memoir that she discovers from a man who's on death row and who's been on death row since he's been a teenager. Um, and he's also an astrologer and astrology was sort of, you know, the catalyst for like, how do we expand the ways that existentially young people are always, you know, yeah, just like kind of seeking meaning in life and seeking spaces for structure and divinity and beauty. And I thought like within the context of these two young women, it was really fun to write astrology um, and kind of these, um, like astrology has been a thing that I've been deeply passionate about um, since I've been young. So um, yeah, so for me, like it was very natural for astrology to factor strongly within the book. Um, and also um, gave me an opportunity to really kind of like delve deep, not only into um, the concept of astrology, but the archetypes and the ways that there's so much stories and symbolism within astrology that is very rich. Um, and yeah, so that's, you know, for me a little bit about why astrology ended up being so deeply in this book. Um, and I want for folks in the chat, I got some things for y'all to do since I can't hear your voices and, you know, kiki as I like to kiki. Um, I'm going to have y'all do our a chat kiki and I want folks, you know, there's a lot of folks who are signed up, um, who are here today. And I just want to get your voices and your spirits in the room on any level. So the question that I would like for you all to answer is for folks to give your names, your pronoun, your astrology sign, and one thing that you like about your sign. So let me put that in the chat. One thing. So, you know, let me know, let me know who's up in here because I'm, I'm in a room from a Gemini's, I'm in a room full of Scorpios, you know, I need to know these things. Um, so that's me giving my little, um, yeah, so this is me telling myself, <laughs> ask folks to give their name, 
pronoun astrology sign and one thing you like about your sign. Okay, I like it. Y'all are, see, and this is what I do love about this moment is that I could ask these questions and people are like, oh, I got your answer. I'm not, you know, I feel like there's less spaces where people are like, oh, I don't really know what sign I am. Like there's some people who are like that a little bit, but I feel like I'm meeting a lot of people who are like, oh, you're going to let me know. Yay. So cool. Then y'all can get to see who else is in the, in the, in the scene. And, um, okay. We got some, some Gemini, Leo, Scorpio, Pisces, Aquarius. It's the best. I love it. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm going to be scrolling in that space, but actually, you know what? I could just read a lot of these. Um, since I'm the speaker, Marie, is it okay if I, you know, Hopefully I can popcorn some of this. Okay. So Marika, she, her, Aquarius. I love the airiness of it. I'm Latrice. I use they, she pronouns. I'm a Pisces. My favorite thing about Pisces is how spiritually inclined we can be. Aries, fiery, butting heads. Um, Anna, she, her is Libra. Love how we are the peacekeepers. Suvia seven and doesn't, oh, where did I go? Suvia Seven doesn't know a lot about her sign. She's an Aquarius. I have a seven-year-old who's an Aquarius. My goodness, are they the gurus of the household? Uh, Amanda, she, her, extremely Capricorn. I love that I can handle big things. Carol, she, her, Aquarius, free-spirited and open-minded. Maureen, she, her, sun and moon sign Capricorn. I love that I'm reliable. Yeah, sun and moon Capricorn is like, listen, I, I got you. Trust me, I got you. Um, da, 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 uh, Amy Geislinger, hopefully I said it right. Scorpio, she, her, hers. I love my spunk and who I am as far as the I love hard. Yes, y'all do. Jaina or Jenna, Aquarius, but self-proclaimed Capricorn. You know what's funny? I met a Capricorn who was on the cusp who was like, but I'm really an Aquarius. So I think this is the first time I've seen it in the other direction. You're just like, y'all Aquarians, nah, listen, I know what I'm about. Um, <laughs> Chemist, Aries, fire, passion. Um, okay, so I'm I'm probably going to stop around there. But we see who's in there. I'm sorry I didn't get to name everybody because, you know, I could be here for a second. But, you know, I'm just glad to see family and friends in here, too. I'm seeing Ash, Jess, and... Um, Yes, some homies. So, yes. Okay, cool. So, you know, this is the thing. It's like uh, we go back and forth between the chat, between the real world, between real life. But I'm doing my best. So I'm going to do a reading for you all um, that is very, um, yeah, this is, um, well, I'll read Gemini season because we are in Gemini season. Shout out to all my Gemini. Um we just finished Taurus season, which is the first earthy season. So I like to think about the signs like Aries is obviously the first sign of the Zodiac. Oh, I should say obviously is the first sign of the Zodiac. And it happens in spring, you know, when the Gregorian calendar is like, we're starting our year, dead of winter, when nobody feel like stepping out. You know what I mean? That's the Gregorian calendar, January 1st. That's the beginning of the new year. But astrology is already showing us some intelligence and starts this new year in the spring. Um, with Aries and Aries, you know, brings out that heat. I kind of feel like Taurus sort of grounds us in some energy of like, okay, cool. We did that spring, pow, pow, you know, we're, we're coming out of the, the like cold and we're like, you know, bursting into the heat. And then Taurus is like, all right, we're going to just get grounded for a second. Look how beautiful we are. Look how beautiful everything is. Oh my God, spring, we did that. And then Gemini season is like, oh my gosh, we got to see where the homie's at. Where's everything going on? So that's kind of how, like, as a person who digs astrology, I also kind of just pay attention to the astrological year, you know? Um, so as an astrology, you know, horoscope, horoscope workshop, like this is going to be very, you know, kind of all over the place to some degree, because how can we not be a little bit all over the place with these sorts of things? But um, I am about to read you all the poem for Gemini season. And like I said, um, yeah, I feel that um, 
as a person that loves astrology, I love kind of thinking about how do each sign kind of inspire me for this season. So like Gemini has really allowed me to just kind of feel a little curious and think about like, well, what do I want to be like focused on and reflecting on um, for this season? Um, so here, let me just get to reading. Gemini season. We was sister teaching brother how to read by oil lamp and moonlight. Ancestors deprived of power over our own minds and bodies, multitasking in plain sight, singing blueprints to freedom while cutting cane and harvesting fields. We dream her in the library in the future. Mercury mind, silver tongue, with books under her arm from each section, her mind can't drink enough. It fly low on every possibility, wants to know all of the knowledges stolen from her ancestors that she ain't forgot. She lays on her stomach and reads till her back hurts. She runs the distance of her yard seven times, the distance from past to future. She lay down and reads some more and remembers the ways that spirit flies through the night of mind, shape-shifting shape seamless through duality. And she is one with her thoughts. She whole in two parts. So that's Gemini season poetry. Um, and yeah, as part of my process for writing this book, I, you know, would write the different narrative prose chunks. And when my brain was tired of sitting down and writing for hours and hours and hours, I was like, let me write some poetry. Because poetry is fun to me. And poetry has always been kind of like my personal therapy. Um, so yeah, so that was kind of a beautiful space. So for all of you who should each have a book, um, there's a poem for each of your signs, which I will share with you all in a moment in case, um, you haven't got to that part of the book, but this other part, um, I'm going to read for you all, um, comes from about three fourths way in the book. And this is when the character Mabel, the second character who I named, who lives and is based out of Minnesota is, um, kind of like obsessed about studying and researching astrology. So she's just like, yo, I went to the library and like got her little notebook out and is starting to take notes. And I'm going to read a section from just her kind of reflecting now that she's sort of obsessed with this thing. I pull out the two books I got on astrology from the library. One is a black woman's guide to love astrology. And the other is astrology forever, a complete and comprehensive guide. I open up the first, which is poetic and easier to understand with a lot of interesting pictures. I find the pages with my sign, Scorpio, and there is a painting of a brown woman with an ornate outfit in the pattern of a scorpion around her big afro, as well as beautiful beetles and bright red orange flowers. I'm almost afraid to read about my sign because it's supposed to be the sexual and secretive one. And I always thought that was embarrassing. I remember the first time I met Jazzy, she was like, before we are friends, I need to know what sign you are. And when I told her, um, and when I told her, she was like, Scorpio, ooh, girl, you a secret freak, ain't you? Real loud in the lunchroom, which was so embarrassing because at the time I didn't even kiss anyone yet. I read the first paragraph of Scorpio in the book. Scorpio, opal, steel, cactus, aloe, burgundy, oya, healing the unseen. Scorpio is the second water sign in the zodiac, and this rainstorm sister carries her magic and passion like sacred lightning, very psychologically layered. This passionate sister is not afraid of the mysteries of life and all of whom want to share their deepest, their deepest self with her. The sisters of this sign are intense and magical in a highly intuitive and empathic, and, and empathic way. They are intentional and tender lovers to all who are lucky enough to enter their lover's rock and will keep you laughing with their intelligent and penetrating humor. The shadow of her intensity is possessiveness, a side effect of her deeply sensitive spirit and past broken trust. This star sign rules the most sacred and intuitive parts of our humanity. Sex, the occult, magic, pleasure, religion, death. She protects the, the divine that is within the shadow and in her own way protects the light. Scorpio symbolizes all that dwells in the magical essence of existence. I stop reading and let those words marinate for a second. I'm not sure what it all necessarily means to me. 
I decide I'm going to read as much of these books as I can, even if I don't understand everything. All of the stuff about houses and planets and degrees is confusing, but also a little like geometry with some mythology. I start to fill up my notebook with notes from both of the books and write up some info for each sign. I write another list and it's with everyone who is close to me, their birthdays and sun and moon signs, which I was able to figure out from a chart in the back of one of the books called an ephemeris. In my reading, I learned that people mainly just know about what their sun sign is, but that is only one part of who we are. That the moon, Venus, Mercury, and all of the planets and where they were in the sky when we were born will tell us the story of who we are. I close my eyes and imagine little baby me coming into the world and all of the planets and stars are imprinted in me like cosmic DNA or something. I wonder if my dying or Fua's death row and all of the messed up stuff in life is somehow controlled by the stars. Are the stars like God? And I don't even think I understand God or how I feel about him or it, or maybe she or them. My grandma talks about God and Jesus in the Bible. And my mama is more meditation in the universe. My dad said he knows God through growing food from seeds and dirt, water and light. And he feels God when he tastes the miracle of fruit in his mouth. Audrey told me a story about how when she was little, she thought her grandma might be God. I still don't know if I know what I believe yet. Even now that I'm maybe going to be gone. I have been praying a fool's prayer anyway to any and everything that might could help me live. I look up the sun and moon signs for me, Whitney, Audrey, Mama, Daddy, and Sahir and write it down in the book. I read that Whitney's sign is the sign of Leo. And when she talks about Whitney, it's Whitney Houston. I read that Whitney's sign is a sign of Leo, which is ruled by the sun and is symbolized by lions and our powerful, creative, giving, and our brave. I write this down in the notebook too. That seems like Whitney. Reading on Audrey and her sign is Aquarius, the water barrier. And that sign is supposed to be free thinking, individual, and inventive. That sounds pretty accurate to her. I I decide to skip to the part of the book that talks about the signs and romance and read the compatibility between Scorpios and Aquarius out of innocent curiosity. Aquarius and Scorpio in love. Both signs are intense in unique and evocative ways. Scorpio's intensity goes deep and soulful while Aquarius's intensity goes wild and into other worlds. They challenge and awaken each other in ways that are curious and at times frustrating. But no blessings come without lessons, and and love without expansion is not the kind of love that satisfies either of these signs. This love may not be the easiest, but when you combine the powers of Scorpio, who goes deep as a submarine made out of hematite and ancestors' bones, and as far-reaching as Aquarius to the birthing of universe itself, you find a love that is dangerous and divine. Hmm. The way they describe us feel intense, dangerous and divine. It's weird to see something written in a book that feels real to your heart. So there's a little something. Ah, yes. OK, so, you know, there's some stuff about uh Astrology and Mabel being your typical person when you're like, okay, that person's cute. What they sign, you sneak in somehow casually like, oh yeah, what's your sign? And then you do your research, you know? (laughs) Some people are, you know, you know, and I'm not calling anybody out. I'm calling myself out. When I first was talking to my wife, um, like, you know, before we started dating and I asked her sign and she was a Leo, I was like, Man, I literally specifically said, I don't ever want to date a Leo again. Like, specifically. Like, I gave him shots. Many shots. I wasn't like, oh, hey. I wasn't just like, you know, I did my research. Um, But then, of course, she stole my heart. And it was so fun. Um, So, yeah. um, So, anyhow, so there's a little bit from the book. And I wanted to open it up for Q&A for a little bit um, before we do... Um, so y'all could put questions in the chat, um, or, hmm, yeah, yeah, if y'all have any questions, no, you know, press, um, but if you have any questions for me, feel free to put it in the chat, I don't know if people could unmute, um, ooh, what are your fave resources for newbies to astrology? 
Let me tell you something. YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. I'm like, yo, YouTube, there's like, because A, there's just, and I could, um, I should come up with, uh, yeah, there's this one guy who's really adorable. He's called the Jiggy Hippie. You know, I and he's like this brother with some locks and he'll go into the houses. He'll go into North Nodes. Like they will really get into the So and there's this other kind of really adorable kind of like goth girl who she's all about money. Like there's certain astrologers who are like, yo, let's get your money right. Um, and there's some other astrologers, you know, who will have different focuses. So anyways, I, I'll take a second and I'll look at some of my YouTube loves, you know, but YouTube's a great spot. Um uh, Alice Sparkly Cat, um, they're uh, um, non-binary, I think, uh, Asian American, brilliant, anti-colonial astrologer who I've been like a huge fan for a couple of years. And yeah, I think I love that they're actually approaching astrology from a decolonial aspect because so much of it is shaped by like kind of Western mythology and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, she's just put out a, or they just put out a book in the last couple of weeks even. So check them out. And then, um, Zion Gray, Z-Y-O-N Gray, um, is a friend of mine, a beautiful, um, you know, black, you know, brilliant astrologer who I go to a lot. And yeah, so if y'all want astrology reading, you know, try to see what's up with Zion Gray. So anyways, I love astrology readings. Get you an astrology reading. And there's such a, I know Latrice has some connects for, for astrologers too. So yeah, I feel like getting an astrology reading. And if you can't afford it, because they cost money, go to astro.com, find out what time you were born, put that joint in, boom, 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 pa-pow, tell you about yourself, you know, in that free computer generated way. Um, <laughs> Okay, so let me see some other questions. Hey, Crystal. Um, uh, let's see. What did it, where did this inspiration for Queenie come from? Um, Queenie, in a lot of ways, is my mother, um, who was like just sort of like this free spirited island woman who never lost her kind of, I guess, vibrance and, you know, effervescence. That's the word I'm thinking of, you know. Um, and I think like there's a lot of ways that I wanted to highlight a grandmother figure that was very comfortable with herself and really sort of wasn't just like, oh, my whole purpose is to serve the people in my family, but more so serve herself and her pleasure and her joy. And I really loved getting um, having the um, Audrey get to witness, you know, an elder who was still very connected to the cosmos and nature and, you know, discovering herself constantly, which reminds me of my mom. Um, and also um, my mentor, Alexis Duvall, um, another like queer icon um, and like countless like black, you know, aunties of mine over the years, you know, just older women who, you know, just got that little zing to them. Um, do you use astrology to generate or develop characters and the choices they make in story? Chamath um, or Chamath. Um, I did a little bit for this book, actually. This is my first like novel. So um, and because astrology was such a theme, I very much was like, yeah, like every character should have a sign. And um, thinking about how to um, sort of utilize the elements of those signs to kind of, you know, like. Mabel, for example, is a Scorpio. And I really wanted to write her with so much depth on the inside that maybe people externally may not always get to see until they really get to, um, um, yeah, really get to sort of um, know her and, and get that confidence and that earned space. Like, I feel like I've known a lot of Scorpios you know, um, who've been, you know, some, some of the, 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 the problematic ways, um, were true, but I also feel like there's just such a depth, um, to folks as well. And, you know, just different elements. So that was fun. Um, the, yeah. So, and develop character and the choices they make in the story to some degree, to some degree, I think, Part of it is like with writing the story, I kind of knew what the characters to some degree were doing, but I did really think about how they interacted with each other based off of their signs. 
Um, and that was really fun, especially for characters like Jazzy, who was a Taurus. And I thought of like my Taurus homies and I'm like, oh yeah, Jazzy has to be the cute one. You know what I mean? Um, and love to just sort of like, you know, just take people out into the world in ways. Um, uh, Audrey, the Aquarius, you know, had to be very, you know, sometimes you can't read her, but you know, you feel her, you know, is the way that I wanted to play with uh, Audrey's character and her Aquarianness. Um, so yeah, that's a great question. Um, and then, okay, I'd love to hear about the kit. So impressed. Tell us about his contents, which I did not make the kit, but daughter of daughters of Ra at Maplewood Mall, um, like provided all of these kits for us. And they're the bomb black owned crystal and kind of esoteric store in Maplewood Mall. Um, so I see that they put tea in there. They put crystals in there. Um, I think they put some frankincense, um, resin, and some charcoal things, which you have to be very careful about burning those. But when you burn it, it smells so good. Um, you essentially burn the coal um, or light it on fire, and then it starts to crackle, and then you put the things in it. So find a wa uh, fire-resistant thing to put it in. And I don't know if Daughters of Ra are on here that they want to, you know, add any vibes or, you know, we could pull y'all on towards the end, and y'all could give a little shout-out. Um, but yeah, they're, they're great. And I was really glad that they were able to hold it down for St. Paul public libraries. Um, Shavanda, I just love everything about this book. Was Black Lovers based off any musicians, bands that you love? Yes. Um, so Black Lovers, um, to me is a little bit of the internet, you know, and, um, Sid from the internet who's, you know, like a non-binary tomboyish, um, and also Michelle and Diggio Cello, that's like, you know, such a hottie um, from the 90s and odds. And they still, um, you know, Michelle's still around. But, um, and uh, gosh, was there any other influences? I think for me, like in thinking about the band, I really was thinking of some of these Black, non-binary, punk kind of alternative energies that I was really seeking as a young person, you know, um, and Think about like, yeah, what kind of band would I have been into? You know, I think I am like 15, 20 years before, or I don't know, like Afropunk came out when I was in my 20s. So that was like one of the first spaces where I was like seeing this alternative energy, you know, but yeah, those are excellent questions. Um, and I have a, um, we're going to move along, but like if y'all have any other questions or comments or thoughts, um, you know, feel free. Uh, so, okay. This is um, some questions I have for y'all, uh, for the group. And then we're going to do some um, writing together. You know, just a little writing, a little astrology writing. Um, so I'm going to put these questions down. And I don't think people can talk or unmute themselves that I know of. But, um, oh, can people do it? Does someone just practice that? Yes, I did. Oh, look at you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Because I think this is, isn't is as much people as we thought it was going to be, right? Yeah, so that's good. Because at first we thought it was going to be like three times as much, which would have been harder for everybody to, you know, take that mic off. But anyhow, so I put um, some questions um, in there so if folks feel enticed to answer. And it doesn't have to just be uh, me filling up with my mouth. So what do y'all love about astrology? What attracts you to it? What attracted you to this experience or whatever? So that's the first question. We could start off there. Um, so yeah, feel free to unmute and talk about what y'all love about astrology. The insight it provides to me about myself and people you know, people who I love, people who are around me and my family. And it just seems just so like magical. It's like, it's like destiny. You're like, oh, there is something that was, you know, destined for me to be a certain way. It's like, I, you know, you walk into something and it's just like, this is, this is for me. This is about me. Like this tells me about myself and, you know, my birth was important. You know, who I am is important. So. I just love that whole idea of astrology. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Shawanda. Yes. Love and it. I love and I love you as an authoress. Thank you, friends. <laughs> cool, awesome. Yes, yeah, my birth is important. Well, now I'm in, now I'm new to it, but I love how free it is. You can do your own thing, and there aren't super strict rules. Exactly. Um, I'll see you later, um, Mercury. Hope I'm saying it right. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, other folks. Um, I like that it makes me kind of like think intentionally about myself. It's kind of it can be like kind of meditative to um, think about like what's what's going on in my life and like what's going on like in the world and kind of try and like piece together like how things are affecting me and like what what that means for like constellations or planets. It's like, oh, maybe that's why I'm feeling this way. Mm -hmm. Totally. I know it's interesting how, you know, like it could be dreary out and you could feel your energy shift, but there's like cosmic and astrological weather happening that, you know, astrology makes you be like, oh, okay, that movement of Mercury or that movement of that kind of planet, you know, impacts me in this way. Um, in the chat, some people are saying, I like that it pinpoints a certain place in time and then you can move forward with transits and progressions. Yes. Like I'm, and it's so vast. Like, I mean, just, oh, it's, it's mind blowing. I found that it allows me to be more gentle with myself and with others, not being resentful of behaviors and tendency. Totally. It's true. It's so true. Cause I feel like, yeah, once you just understand that's people's nature, you know, and you know, like if you subscribe to, um, to, you know, astrology, you're like, okay, that's just how they're going to be, you know, <laughs> and this is how I'm going to be. So, um, uh, I love all of these answers. A connection to my grandmother facilitates ancestral healing for me. It makes me look up at the moon more. Yes. You know, like how are we cognizant that we are part of the universe and that we're not just you know, these little ants in a uh, capitalist society marching on to these raggedy beats, but that we actually have a complicated reality that goes beyond, you know, as, as fascinating and powerful and, you know, referential this planet is to us. Like all of these planets and stars want to talk to us and our relationship with us. So, yes. Um, other any other thoughts questions yeah uh, responses yeah i was just i was just gonna say because it's it's universal and like one of my best friends in um in undergrad was just really into it and she made me i guess get more into it I, and it, it just makes sense because it's natural right like i guess maybe i've always i'm a taurus as you already know and um and so i've always felt connected to the earth and so i think there's something very grounding about it for me um and like you said it's vast it's like this existential kind of ever like all-knowing just kind of uh presence that's what i think it's cool mm -hmm. yeah no i love that just being connected to the earth and the cosmos at the same time which there's not very much in society that gives you permission to be connected to things that's a connected to, you know, the earth and the land and nature and all of the things as it unfolds, but also like the beyond, like, you know, and it's fascinating too, because I think there's like, as a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. Like that was like my thing. Actually in the book, a lot of how I wrote a Fua's character about wanting to be an astronaut was based off of me. Um, but then astrology is kind of like a natural, you know, it's like another natural way to feel a part of the cosmos that doesn't require leaving trash on the moon. When I've heard they love trash on the moon, I was like, that is the raggiest thing I've ever heard on the, like who leaves trash on the moon? Like that's like your mom never gave you any instructions for life. It was just like, yeah, go ahead. Like just leave trash on the moon. Anyways, I just, the things you learn. Um, <laughs> here, I'm seeing it. Uh, doo, 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 doo. I try very intensely to garden by phases of the moon. I try to combine with gardening by astrological sign, which requires a lot of planning and intention. Yes, there's like the um, zodiac, or the, not the, uh, the almanac. Like that's like an old thing to do is to do certain things based off of certain placements of the moon and all of that. You know, like I think there's a way that people try to invalidate 
astrology as, you know, oh, it's not scientific, but like, it's been the science that a lot of people have moved with, you know, whether it's, you know, the astrology of kind of Western astrology or the astrology of, you know, within China or within India or within West Africa, like there's so many languages of astrology in the world. So thank you for um, lifting that up, um, uh, Kathleen. What what my boo Ash saying? Let's see. I feel like part of astrology's resurgence is connected to folks taking power back around defining their own spirituality and aligning astrology with other core beliefs and shedding the early messages around the dark arts, scare tactics, ding, ding, yes. Thank you. Drop that invisible digital mic. <laughs> yes, I love what everybody's saying. How, um, okay, Alice is saying, hearing other people's answers is making me realize that what I like best is how it gives people a way to reflect together about ourselves. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So like astrology, like, I mean, not to compare it, it doesn't need to even be compared to other mass religions, but it really is a thing that's individual and collective, you know, and it's individually empowering and you could, you know, learn from people and, you know, no, like, I feel like I spend a lot of time studying my own chart, you know, which I think is a thing I encourage everybody to do, like get your chart and just study it over and over again. Like I still am discovering things about myself, you know, um, so yeah, um, and um, Ash started answering that second question, um, and I'm just gonna put it in the chat again. Um, uh, why do folks think astrology is resurging in popularity? So if anybody wants to continue to riff off of that, um, or if it's become more popular in your life, you know, feel free to respond. I feel like I really tried to find something my whole life and everything else was super limited and narrow. And if you didn't follow this rule, then you weren't allowed to be part of the group um, mm. or if you disagreed. And then, so this was, it was just like easy to be involved because everyone could be involved mm. like, and they could choose their level of involvement. And that, that for me was like, ding, 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 checked all the boxes and it made it really, and like, you didn't have to go to a special building to do it. So, so like in a, in a pandemic was a really easy way to like spend a lot of time working on myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, it's interesting. Cause I remember, you know, when I was a teenager looking up, learning about astrology, I would go to like these bookstores and just grab like every astrology book and just like hold up in a corner and just all of this stuff. And now it's different. But it's, it was exactly that. I was like, oh, wow, this is so deep. Like, you know, just looking at all these different elements. So oh, thank y'all. Okay, so I wanted to give y'all a chance um, to do some astrology-inspired writing, which I don't know if y'all came here expecting to do any writing. So hopefully you're just, you know, like, okay, cool, whatever, Janata. Um, and don't feel like you have to do, you know, a whole, I don't know. I always feel like it's, I try not to make people feel like it's school, but that's because I've been a teacher and kids are like, oh, wait a minute. Now we have to take a notebook out. Oh, man. You know, they feel betrayed. But like adults have more decorum typically. So we leave that go. Um, but anyhow, um, I just put in the chat all of the different um, each sign and the poem, um, the page that the poem is on um, for that astrological sign. And um what I wanted folks to, to do is, um, or here, what did I write it down? We have a writing activity here, folks. And um, with it, I want you to, um, and, and I'll, actually, I'll just explain it and then I'll write it in the chat. Um, I want you to find this poem um, of your sign in the book and find six words, pick six words from, the, from your poem. So if you're like, moon, anger, hothead, whatever it is, you know, find six words that resonate for you for whatever reason. It could resonate because it resonates to who you think it is. There resonates because they're just pretty words that you like the, the look of or the sound of. Um, and then write down a thing about your sign that you agree with and a thing about your sign that you disagree with. So, you know, like, let me pick on my wife, for example, the Leo. 
um, and Shavinda, who's also a Leo, um, she might be like, oh, you know, I agree that we're really creative and that we're really, you know, vibrant and, um, you know, warm or what have you. Um, but I will disagree that we are attention whores, you know, which was wrong of being an attention whore, you know, some people come on, um, which I, I think is good. Sometimes you need attention, but to say, you're like, I disagree with that. Okay. Um, then you could just play around with that thing. Okay. And then, so finding those three things, six words, a thing you agree about with your sign, a thing you disagree about, um, you could write, I'm going to give you all about, um, let's see, seven minutes to start writing something. Um, and maybe this thing will go a little bit later. So folks need to talk a little bit longer. You won't feel like at seven o'clock, everything's shutting off. It's going to still be some time afterwards. So write a poem, a tribute, a story, a letter, an essay inspired by all of those things, you know? So it can be inspired by you. It could be inspired by your sign. It could be something completely different, um, but um, write something using those elements, um, whether it be a poem, a story, a letter, a tribute. Um, does that does that feel, y'all got me? Okay, and I'll, I'll write it in the, um, the chat. How, how did that go for folks? You know, was it okay? Scary, indulgent, exciting? It was cool. How was it? Or, you know, folks feel like writing in the chat, thumbs up, that's awesome. Um, or unmute. Um, yeah, it was nice to write again. It's been a long time. I know these like micro writes, you can never, you know, go wrong. It's like, let me just write for a little something, something kind of. Free. How was how was writing about um, the the with the prompts? How was working with thinking about the astrological prompts? Pretty okay. Okay, good. Cool. <laughs> well, we're about wrapped up, um, or we got about two more minutes or so, and I'm down here to hang out and talk and. Um, uh, oh, I like that. My word list resulted in a perfect six word portrait. I love it. Um, yeah, so I'm here to hang out. If folks have any other questions, I just want to thank y'all so much for making time to be with me and my book and all the ways that people have been with my book and, you know, getting to play with astrology and making me feel like it's not a weird nerdy thing that I'm obsessed about, but that we're all about that life. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh yeah. Yeah, thank you, Janata. And you know, thank you to everybody for coming tonight. Um, it's been really beautiful. And this is our final event of Read Brave 2021. Um, and we've just been really honored to have you, Janata, as our featured author this year. Like you've brought so much joy and light and heart um, at a time when I think it was really hard to find a lot of that for us. So we're really grateful to you and to your work. Um, we have a lot of thanks to give to people. Um, Shante at Daughter of Ra, I've been texting with her, is working at the shop right now, and she's so thrilled that everyone loves the kits, and she can't wait to talk with everybody. Um, so she said, come by with any questions that you have, and she is ready for you any time of day. Um, so <laughs> thank you, everybody. Really grateful for you. Um, I'm going to put in the chat right now a survey that we'd love to hear your thoughts about tonight and about Read Brave. Um, this is our favorite time of year, and we just really love that everyone shows up in this way. So I'll put that right here. But thank you, Donata. Thank you, everybody. It's been a wonderful night. Yes, it has been. It has been. Um, I've been grateful to be a part of the St. Paul Read Brave experience. And um, yeah, and just get more opportunities to share, yeah, this book. So thank you all for making this space. And yeah, I'm, yeah, this is, thank you. I, I'm very happy about all of how everything went. So thank you. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Coolio. All right. Well, Amanda, you know how to get a hold of me. 
<laughs> I do. This Capricorn won't be emailing everyone all the time anymore. End of read, yeah. Brave. <laughs> and Ruby, did I meet you at Moon Palace? Um, I, listen, I was just gonna, I was like, let me get out here and say something, but I just had to say that I, I yes, we did meet at a, um, a different book club and you came and did a reading um, and it was awesome. And, and I think I, I've, I've shared with you a little bit of my experience with my son and how I uh, really felt about looking at um, a different perspective, you know, on his situation. Um, and I, I just, yeah, I, I really admire your writing um, and your voice. It, it was really, if, if people have not listened to the audiobook, I highly recommend it. Um, it is mm -hmm. awesome. And thank you for doing this. This was, this was great. The writing activity, all of it has been really good. I grew up, I was one of those that was always like in the magazine and I was laughing and identifying with you um, about just like, I want all the astrology books. Um, and I have like this really thick one that's on relationships and it's just a nice different way of getting to know your relationships with others, you know, and just another way to connect with people. So it's cool. And I love how you incorporated that into the book yeah so. oh thank you i know it was so it was actually really impactful when i met you at moon palace and you told me about your connection with the book and yeah it's been wonderful just like the seasons of sharing the book and yeah just um yeah there's just so many intersections it's it's brought me and introduced me to so many people who haven't written this book so it's been like my a dream come true to say the least so yeah oh cool well i love all of y'all and yeah, um, yeah, I never can say goodbye, like the Jackson 5 said. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs>